Last year, I was here as a participant. This year, I'm here as a moderator. Next year, I hope the same conference will be held in Cambodia, where I'm currently based. <laughs> this topic of fundraising is highly emotional, and I think it impacts, um, it is probably the most important priority uh, with many of our social enterprises. So today we have a very distinguished panel. Two of them do not need any introduction. First, uh, Brother Ang, let's give him a big hand. <coughs> and Mr. Tave, whom we've just heard from. Hey, I do like to introduce my namesake, Andy Sim. Andy Sim has... <laughs> He has a very, uh, probably the most enviable job in, in, in Singapore at the moment. He heads the digital innovation team at NVPCs. So that's uh, Andy. And then Mr. Daniel Ong. Uh, Mr. Ong is from Care Concern, right? And he's uh, heading the corporate communications and partnerships. Okay, so without further ado, I think, um, Andy. Uh, let's, let me pick on you first. We spoke a, little, a few moments ago about technology being a great leveler, a great enabler, and yet at the same time, the social services industry is struggling to catch up with the private industry in terms of how to use this technology for, for fundraising. Can you share with us some of your ideas on how we can not just catch up with the rest of the commercial world, but actually to leapfrog? Thanks, yeah, Andrew. Yeah. Let me actually begin first by saying that if we look at technology today, we're definitely living in a very exciting time where technology is not just an enabler, but it's also a disruptor. You know, we can see actually in the commercial sector, you know, how actually organizations are using technology now to leapfrog by transforming its business model. You know, so the look at technology, therefore, not just as uh, for the sake of automating, but rather for the sake of actually creating new business model. What does that actually mean for social sector? I think number one is the way you actually engage your donors, the way you engage your volunteer. You know, with technology now, you know, we talk about social media, for example. You know, traditionally, if you want to engage your, your uh, donors, for example, you know, the cost of doing it can be pretty expensive. You know, so you therefore can only do it with some of those like high touch. Uh, uh, donors. But with technology, you can actually, you know, tell with social media, in fact, engage actually that particular donor, maybe even 10 times a day, 20 times a day, you know, with a cost that is a fraction of what you used to be paying. You know, so in the area of engagement, therefore, technology is something that you can actually look at. The other thing is, uh, you know, we, we heard earlier about the, this whole iShy projects and all those, you know, it's about resource optimization. You know, technology is also a means for us to actually uh, look at actually how best to actually automate uh, or, or rather improve and optimize the resource that we have to, uh, that's given to us. Um, you know, and that actually includes, in fact, today's topic about governance and all that. Governance, in my view, should be actually built within a business process that can be enabled through technology. You know, so what it means is that people actually uh, using you, you know, human-centric flows and design, you can actually design governance in such a way where you're allowed to do certain things and not allowed to do others. And by doing more of that, that right thing, you actually change your behavior. So this is how technology... And I think the last thing that I see technology can actually help the social sector is an area of sharing. You know, the sharing in terms of sharing of information, sharing of data. I mean, of course, you know, we've got to make sure that we safeguard that against the data privacy. But there are insights and all that that we can actually share with one another. You know, Minister Graceful earlier shared about, like, for example, you know, it's not uncommon that when you actually go out to maybe certain beneficiary uh, to give them a packet of rice and you find that actually this particular person actually received more than one. Mm. You know, these are things that, you know, through information sharing and all that, hopefully we can actually reduce that kind of duplicate. The other part of sharing that we actually intend to do together at SG Care is actually to also then look at actually creating common services, you know, that is enabled through technology. And these services means that if we can actually make them open, you know, organization, charity, organ can actually take advantage of these services and build it within their process as well. Yeah. So look at technology, it can be for engagement, for optimization, as well as for sharing. Thank you, Andy. Uh, 
Brother Ang, you have comment. Yeah, my my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Very soon, you don't have a choice. Today, donations. Is very soon your donation will be T, T. If you don't have the T, T, no one will donate to you. Because donation today has shifted from donation on the box to online donations to donation using what? Using what? QR codes, using e wallet, using e money. So I put to you, my brother and sister from the charity sectors. Either we T <laughs> or we are out of the game. <laughs> okay, that was very clear. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, at this point, I have to make a confession. Uh, last night, I was at a fine dining dinner, and at two, there were four of us. The three of us were in the same uh, committee, and we spent the entire night texting our friends in order to raise the much-needed money for our golf charity event, which happens at the end of the month. So. I have lost a lot of friends because of my job as a chairman of uh, Very Special Arts, and the rest of my friends are actually trying to avoid me because of my repeat, repeated requests for money. So I'm looking forward to the day when we pee uh, mm. for money instead of having to tax them uh, individually. Um, the, the question I had uh, for Mr. Tay was, um, you know, th there's a fundraising uh, efficiency ratio, right? Uh, we, all of us struggle to meet that ratio, that 30-70 ratio. Um, are there any penalties for not meeting that ratio? Because obviously, sometimes you struggle, you meet it, and you try, and what if you don't meet it? Do we go to jail? <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't want to talk about penalties, but I, I talk about uh, financial planning. The reason why a lot of us struggle right, uh, to meet that ratio uh, is because at the outset, uh, you don't actually sit down to do a detailed budget on all the relevant and related expenses. Right. Now, actually, a lot of this requires a bit of discipline and planning. Because if you don't have that discipline and planning, you're not going to meet the ratio. Right? Uh, the, the, the regulations and penalty aside, we're not here to scare people. But I think we're here, as I said, uh, the more important thing is to uphold public trust. Public trust. Imagine if one day, you know, it's not about a penalty or going to jail. It's about if one day we don't do proper planning and we have uh, this expense ratio that make up 60-70% and only 30% or 40% go to the beneficiary, after a while, what is going to happen to our sector? Nobody is going to believe in all this fundraising because they say, this is a scheme to enrich those people who are involved in fundraising, in, cre in fact, creating employment opportunities. Right? And ultimately, as a sector, okay. we all suffer. Right? So I think the penalties aside, uh, that, that I will leave it to Dr. Ang to tell you. Uh, if he see you, what he's going to do. <laughs> right? Hey, I love you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but don't, don't, don't make him use the, the, the rules and regulation to come and talk to you, you know what I mean? This is the last thing, actually, we want to avoid, right? We, we don't want to come to see any one of you, including accounting firms, uh, that we sometimes have to go to you because he appoint me to go and check on you, all right? This is the last thing we want to do, and this is the last thing we want to make money from as an accounting firm. I can tell you this, all right? Every investigation that if he call me to go and do, honestly, I hope I can tell him, no, I don't want to do it. Mm. Because it's not the money we want to make. Okay. We want every one of you to, f to be good, yeah. right? And to follow the rules. Mm. That has to be our starting point. Not to talk to you about, <coughs> if you don't do this, you will end up in Changi prison. Mm. That is not the conversation I want to have. All right. Okay, that's very reassuring. Thank you. Um, let's bring uh, Daniel into the, <laughs> the <laughs> discussion at this point. Um, you know, before we do any charity event, there's a need to build community with your, um, your prospective uh, donors. Okay? And I think the importance of communication uh, before the, the fundraising, during and even after for disclosure reasons and all that. So can you tell us your experience in terms of communicating with intended donors? How do you go about it and what's the best way of going about doing this? 
I think that uh, the, the communication part, I, I certainly agree that that's very important because uh, we really want to communicate um, the vision and mission of what charities are doing. For example, in Care Corner, where I'm from, uh, in meeting up with uh, donors even before the event or even after the event, I think it is important to be very clear, to communicate the vision and mission of your organisation and the impact and also the people that you are trying to reach out to. I think this is a big piece that uh, we, we can communicate to donors um, and also prospective donors. The other thing I, I recognise that is very important uh, is along what was shared actually this morning and also through all the speakers here, uh, is the whole topic of being transparent and also being accountable to donors. You know, sometimes I think this is an encouragement for us, all of us as charity leaders. Uh, I always believe that Singaporeans are very generous people, right? I mean, we are all very generous people. Uh, when we see a need, we respond to that need. I think the issue is to how to communicate that need to the people that you are meeting and also how you use the resources, the support given to you in a very effective way so that you can impact the community. Uh, I think in terms of doing that, you are actually building a sense of uh, accountability and transparency with the donors. And I think that, that that is a big piece of it that I think for charities leaders to be able to bring across to all the prospective donors. And of course, I think having said it all, uh, when donors come on board with you, I think it's also good to wrap it up, you know, and, and to actually close it up with the donors uh, to give a reporting, uh, whether formally, informally, and I think now you have to do it very formally uh, after today's session and, and uh, with all the framework that's given to us, uh, to be able to account basically to donors where do we park their resources, where do we park their help, and what is the impact of their support, you know, in terms of reaching out to more communities or in terms of enhancing the work that you do? Thank you. Uh, I have uh, some questions from the floor. Uh, in the interest of time, I have to paraphrase these questions, so forgive me if I leave out some details. Okay, this one is, um, first one is regards to online sales of jewellery. And this particular company is wanting to donate 25% of their sales to charity. Mm. Now, is this an act of charity? Or is this a purely a commercial move? No, no, no. You want me? Please. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, you can chip in, but this is a, this is a question for the regulator. You agree? <laughs> yeah. The answer is right. Can, cannot. If not, what? My brothers and sisters, <laughs> uh, I encourage corporates to do good. And there are many ways corporates can do good. My minister have mentioned that one way to do good is volunteerism. And that's why many of you are here. The other way the corporate can do good is from what they are doing as part of the business, donate certain percentage to charity. Like for your example, if the jury say that 25% of my sales go to charity, the answer is yes, you can. However, number one, you must make sure that people know which charity it go to. There must be an agreement with a charity. Now, if you say that you're going to give it to Singapore Cancer Foundation, there must be an agreement. Number two, there must be proper record keeping. It cannot be that you say you want to give, but no one knows what is the account. How much sales have you clocked it? No. Because the moment you declare that this sales is going to the charity, the amount that collected is no longer yours. Belong to who? Belong to the charities. It's a charitable asset. And once it's a charitable asset, it needs to have proper accounting. And this is where, if you don't do proper accounting, sometimes I will ask you to do so. But please, my brother and sister, please do not, damp do not see this as an extra burden especially for the corporate here. Please don't see this as an extra burden. It's just that we want proper accountability, not only for you, 
but for the people who purchase the jewelry because they purchase on the understanding that the 25% of the proceeds go to charity. Mm. Is, that, is that very clear? The process is not complicated. It's a simple process. Just make sure that you have an agreement and you have proper accounting records. Mm. Please, please, our brother and sister from corporate, please do give more. <laughs> <laughs> I, on behalf of the beneficiary, I thank you in advance. <laughs> Cecil. Okay, uh, a related question actually is with regard to interchange fees by credit card companies. And speaking as a banker, uh, there's a request now that maybe the Commissioner for Charities should uh, talk to these credit card companies to waive that interchange fee uh, because that is currently borne by the charity when they do fundraising. Uh, any views or comments? Not necessarily from the panelists, but from the floor. Any credit card company people here? Yeah, any credit card <laughs> company people here? No, no, maybe I should speak to them. <laughs> okay. any, any of them? I'll I share with you something we have done. Uh, am I supposed to speak? Uh, yeah, the go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but any, any views from the floor on this? I think this is a long-standing question, and, you know, uh, if they start waiving this, they, I guess the precedence for they have to waive the interchange fee and they're out of business for but all, I, all I, transactions. I can offer yeah. a view. Uh, the, the reason why... Uh, uh, donors use credit card to give donation and I'd like to say this that it is because they can earn miles they can earn points those points can be converted into air miles or or vouchers right so I think as a business you got to ask who pay for it all right who pay for it so the credit card company will have to pay for it right uh, or with the participating merchant all right so I, I don't speak for the credit card company, I don't work for them, but I, I, I think when you start to think about that, you will realise that uh, I think, yes, we can talk to them, but I don't think it's going to be easy mm -hmm. for them to, mm -hmm. to waive those uh, admin fees, right? because clearly there is <coughs> a business intent, That's uh, the business and when they give you uh, credit card points, all right, uh, and you really deem it, there's a cost. right? Someone has to pay for it. So from that perspective, I think it's hard. Right? I think it's hard. But I think a, a better way is to actually uh, work with organizations uh, to sell the purpose, the alignment. That's why the one o'clock uh, talk by Brother Ang is important. Uh, because if you can do that with the organization, now I explain this to you, you can do that with the organizations, all right? Then the organizations can organize monthly gyro transfer to your account. So assuming you talk to DBS Bank, right? Any DBS Bank people here? You know they have, uh, I think globally they have easily twenty thousand people, mm. and if they, if they uh, every month give a group of charities, for every payroll they pay ten dollars. You know how much it is. So I think these are these are things that uh, uh, charities can do, all right, uh, to encourage more. Uh, reach out to the corporates to encourage more of the corporate employees to buy into your, to your, to your, to your cost, and then you know work some arrangement on monthly gyro contribution. Thank you. Okay, allow me to just share from our experience on giving dollars. We actually did approach some of the banks to look into this aspect. And actually, if you look at this whole credit card payment and all that, there's actually three even different players. There is actually a bank that's issuing the card. There is actually a whole international exchange that is, you know, your Amex, your Visa, you know, and your master, you know. And then there is actually the third, and this is international, you know, then there is actually another third component, which is the, uh, the payment gateway organization. Those just could be your Stripe, your Wirecard, you know, these different organizations. So the, the, there's actually a lot of complexity. In fact, the first, uh, the, uh, the banks, the local banks are actually quite willing to actually do their part. You know, so they actually keep the fees down to very, very low for charity. So that's why charity actually enjoy a different rate from, from uh, other merchants. Then the, uh, the, the card issuer, I mean, uh, sorry, the payment gateway organization, these are very competitive, so they don't actually take a big card as well. Actually, the one that takes actually the chunk of it is actually the international, uh, uh, 
you know, the, whether it's the master, the, the Amex and all that. And this is actually done at an international level. It is not even local. I mean, just to give you an idea. That is why, actually, if you look at in the tech world, there is this whole talk about fintech. The fintech is actually intended to disrupt this market. So I think until we see that happening, I don't believe that the international uh, organization you know, of the master, the visa and all uh, this will actually look at reducing it because that's, that's their core business. Mm. Yeah, um, let's bring us back to the subject of good practices in fundraising. Mm. Um, we've um, heard uh, several ideas uh, today using technology, building community and so on. But I'd like to hear from the participants. Uh, are there any ideas that you can share with us or ideas with regards to um, new ways of fundraising which we haven't thought about. Just to kick that off, uh, let, me, let me just share with you one idea that is as probably as old as the hills. Now, everybody has gone online, right? All the newsletters, all the donation drives, and most of it is online. So we at Very Special Arts have decided to go the other extreme because we decided to put up a newsletter, okay? The newsletter is the oldest trick in the book. However, the newsletter you can bring to the bathroom, to your, wherever you want to bring it. And it stays on your table, so you have to look at it. So, again, it is not the only thing you need to do to raise money, but it builds the communications, it builds the community that results in your being able to reach out when you need to have an event uh, much better. So, I, I think the newsletter for, for $1,000, you can run up 5,000 copies. That's not a bad investment at all. So, uh, members of the... Uh, uh, the participants, any other new ideas you have in your various charities that you want to share with us? We have microphones all around the floor, so if you'd like to contribute, uh, the um, staff will just raise their mics yes, so please. that you can signal to any one of those. Would anybody like to share their ideas? On fundraising? With 400 other people <laughs> who will copy your idea? But never mind, we're in a charity organization, right? <laughs> share. Who would like to take to the mic? Okay, we have a contributor over here, Andy. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, you talk about a lot about technology and online fundraising and all these things. And uh, may I say so, I think people are already getting tired of it because every time you go on Facebook or wherever, they ask you for your money. <laughs> so what I found out is there's nothing better to have a personal approach. Mm. Because the other problem, what I face personally is, first of all, to get volunteers at all. Because many people think now, okay, I give $10, now I feel good. I did something good. That's enough. Mm. So they don't want to spend their time and their effort and everything mm. in it. And then the next thing is, okay, I give the $10, but okay, wherever it goes, I don't care. Because honestly, many people don't care about $10 anymore. Mm. But if I ask you on the street and say, can you please give me $10 for this and for this and for this, and I have questions, then there's a communication starting. What you just said, communication is also a, a key thing. So I see the trend should not only be online. Still, we need volunteers, and we still need an exchange of thoughts and ideas. This is, I think, what we are doing also here. So it's not a new idea what I bring up, but it's just don't forget the personal touch you need for mm. something which is close to your heart. Mm. Either is it for people, for animals, to help somebody, it doesn't matter. If, if I tell you the story or I give you an example, it's still a different story. Just I go Facebook and I swap this way and this way, I give $10 and end of story and that's my volunteering, the five seconds. Thank so, thank you. you. Can, can I thank you very much. <laughs> can I respond? I love to. Oh, yeah, let's give yeah. a big hand first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, brother Ang, you have yeah. two minutes. My, my, my sister. <laughs> What is the most precious in this world to us, to a, to a human being? Money? Time. Because do you know that you got money, you cannot buy times. You cannot buy times. Therefore, when you want to give and you give times, you are giving something very precious. And times come in the form of voluntarism. 
But there's another part about volunteerism that is superior than money. Don't get me wrong, I want more money. Please donate more to the charity. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is that when you give times, something magical happens. A good example is, if someone that is very able, that help the unable, other than helping the unable, the chemistry between the able and the unable creates social capitals. Mm. Create the care, the value that we all have been living all about. And it's this care and social capitals that goes to what? It's going to multiply. So what I'm trying to say here is this. Charity is not only about caring, but charity is about building a better society. Okay. And this includes a very important component, my sister, volunteerism. <laughs> Please continue to volunteer your time. <laughs> All right? Thank you. Can, can I just offer my comments as well, since uh, there's a mention of technology? I, I like this, uh, you know, th your comments very much. Uh, this is why, actually, when we design giving.sg, it's designed it to be actually an all-in place that allows people to give their money, their time, as well as their talent. You know, what it means is that, you know, it's like a different stage of people's life, they might actually prefer to actually uh, give in different ways. So like, for example, a child might give actually more of the time, you know, when they're in school. Then actually when people start to go out to work, they might actually want to give more time, um, give more money, and then, you know, when they reach a certain stage, maybe they give their talent. But what is more important is that from an act of giving, you know, which is a transaction, it's how to convert that into a relationship. This is where we need actually all of us to come together and participate because when we built it as a platform of giving.sg, it has at the end of it a user journey that everyone, you know, right now we have 152,000 people, comes on board, they actually start that journey. And that journey then allows them to say from actually triggering a need, they take an action. That's just a transaction. And then from a transaction, they then will start to look at actually how my contribution has actually helped someone. That's from an impact point of view. When you have an impact, you actually deepen that journey. And then later, on the part about growing, it is actually looking at then bringing in the aspect of meaning. Because if, for example, if I give to an animal, then the animal, the charity that supports the animal should be updating me, sharing me information, about the cause about the animal, or it could be an elderly. And then from there, we, you know, allows the individual to deepen that relationship. And I think as what uh, Dr. Ang said, ultimately, actually for us, when we design giving.sg also, we design such a way, it's about not just the beneficiary, it's actually the giver. Because if you want to create a caring and inclusive society going forward, it is actually focusing on the giver. And there is really joy in giving. Harvard Business uh, School has actually done study, shows that happier people give more, and giving makes people happier. Mm -hmm. You know, or if you look at uh, Viktor Frankl's Men's Search for Meaning, it's really at the end of it, we want the actualization. You know, and it, the actualization it doesn't have to be only when you reach, you are rich. You know, the next self actualization can come actually even when you can give. Your time, your time of befriending someone, your time of, it's actually, you know, benefit the giver actually as much as the, mm. the person who yeah. receives it. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I, I certainly agreed uh, with what the lady has shared earlier on. Uh, but let me again reiterate the, this experience I have. And as a charity leader in the, uh, in the social service and also in fundraising, one of the takeaways that I have is that while working with corporates and even with individual donors, I think when it goes beyond just the monetary aspect of it, of donation, when they come in, probably at the very beginning when you engage them and they are convinced of the good work that you do, they support you in terms of monetary resources. But I think beyond that, is the very important element that was shared by our friends here uh, earlier on. It's actually to engage them, to move them from being a donor that just give money,
to be able to also volunteer their time and their skill sets. Mm. And I think this is very powerful because when they are able to move to that level, then they will really be able to embrace totally what the organization is doing. Yes. So it's just beyond money. Because when they volunteer, when they dirty their hands, when they spend time with the beneficiaries, when they see the impact of your work, they can actually turn out to be ambassadors for you. Right. And this is the experience that I have. Because while corporates work with us in Care Corner, we realize that actually many of them turn out to be ambassadors for Care Corner. They speak of the work that we do, you know, and, and I think this is very powerful. Mm. Thank you. Um, I think what's clear, I'll come to you in a moment, uh, is that any idea for fundraising can become jaded, even online donations. Okay, so what we have to do is keep, keep the imagination alive. And here's where I need to flesh out um, some ideas. I come back to my golf charity event again. Now, you have to align what you're doing on the charity front with your, the mission of your charity organization to begin with. So a golf event is a golf event. People play golf, but people can play golf anytime. You don't need to have a charity golf event. The difference is that at the end of the game, you build community with your potential donors and your sponsors by uh, doing those things that make your make you tick to begin with. For example, we'll be having a show with regards to uh, putting up the performers whom we have trained over many years. Some of them are world-class performers to perform for the golfers. We, we are putting up for, for sale the paintings that our artists, our disabled artists have been, have been putting up for years and we're putting on sale and so on and so forth. So you align the mission of your organization to the event. That makes it a little uh, more real, that makes it a little less jaded. The idea may not be the, 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 the newest around, but still, what you're injecting to it is your own DNA, and that makes the community that we've, the, we've been talking about. Yes, the lady in green. Okay, I just wanted to share uh, you know, some of the uh, very touching ways of fundraising. So, a couple of things. First of all, we are really looking at appealing uh, to the entire brain, right? Uh, but the whole thing about the donation and parting with the money is actually an emotional thing. Mm. So one of the key things which I've learned uh, watching lots of television ads in the UK, and they do this extremely well, is they will tell the, and they show the, the, the video of a starving child. And they said for a dollar or one pound, this is uh, how it will transform life. So the messaging in terms of transformation and yeah. then going into online yes. WhatsApp and all that yes. is really great. And it's all about sub subscription. And it tells you the story about how your $1 is actually going to give you the end result, right? This actually then translates into adoption and sponsorship. So example, uh, adopting a family, you know, making sure that your dollar, you pay <coughs> certain school fees, uh, will uh, enable you to do X, Y, Z. And I do this personally. I've actually, uh, you know, sponsored my um, helper's uh, daughter through her education because I can see the actual ROI in terms mm. of the impact, right? And it's actually an emotional uh, element, <laughs> nothing to do with logic. But then having said that, uh, also on the logical front, from a systems viewpoint, uh, the idea of uh, looking at legitimacy uh, comes from tax rebates. So, you know, the minute mm. you say the Singapore government is giving you tax back, you think and you automatically uh, assume it must be a charity of worth, that you don't really need to do the homework. So I think uh, having that credit also helps tremendously. Uh, not in terms of the ROI in getting the tax back, but you know that the government actually recognises this. Therefore, it must be a legitimate charity that you're going to. Yeah. Right. That can endorsement I, is so can key. I, can I, can yeah. I do an advertisement? Brother, can I? Yeah. Uh, we are now launching the Safer Giving campaign and we are teaching Singaporeans before you give, first you ask, then you check, then you give more. <laughs> ask, check, give. <laughs> like edgy secure like that, uh, run, hide, tell. <laughs> but we all, charity is ask, check, give more. Now, the reason why I bring this to your attention is that just now the media asked why I introduced the visibility guides. I want to tell you something. You may not have a choice. You may not have a choice because I am educating donors to be more discerning. So 
More listening means they will ask you more questions. And if you are unable to answer the questions, they will not volunteer in organizations. They will not actually give you the charity dollars. They will give others who are able to answer their questions more adequately. So the first point. My second point to you is, I'm now, uh, no media, right? Start away. Start You're recorded. <laughs> recorded is okay. <laughs> I just want to share with you how I'm now, you're right, my sister, is that under the check component, you check on my registry. And the registry will indicate to you whether is it a registered charity. That's one bar. Because for you to register as a charity, you, have, you bet I've gone through the check. I have to, right? Then, for a charity to be an IPC, Institute of Public Characters, I do an even deeper check. Because now public money is involved. Every dollar people give, we all contribute 250%. Do you know that? As tax incentive. So all of us have to make sure that the money go to where it intended and where it's purposeful. My next step to all the charities in this portal, I understand Next time when you go in, imagine, check, 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 you key in the name. Ding! You see the charity, you got an X. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> then, check, question mark, means what? You got problem, you didn't find me. X means, ah, uh, uh -huh, I'm coming. And then, you see the word, tick, means what? Please give more. <laughs> now, this is the level of information we are going to empower the donors. We are not there yet, so I say this is future. Don't no need to uh, just make sure you register in my charity sector, my charity register first. First, second, we will then move into the next step. But it's not. I, I'm still thinking of how to do it. But I choose to inform you in advance so that we all can prepare for the journey whereby we empower the donor to be more discerning. Mm. Okay, brother and sister, it's coming. Okay. <laughs> no, I just want to share from a donor's perspective. Uh, I came from a poor family, so uh, I benefited from a bursary and a scholarship that the university gave me. So I will always make it a point to, to donate every year to the universities. Now, there's one university that, that actually resonates with me. Why? Because uh, they actually tell me this donation goes to which student. Mm -hmm. And they actually get the student to communicate with me and they actually uh, let me feel uh, how, those, how that money has supported some a young kid's education. Mm -hmm. A lot of you, including me, uh, didn't realise that today poverty in Singapore is a very different concept. People who really need help uh, are not those who are in the three-room flat and four-room flat. They are in a five-room flat. Mm. Father, mother, no job. Kids have to go through education. All right. Singapore property or Singapore people who need help, plenty. Uh, and in the educational course, uh, as a donor, I, I, I feel very heartened that the, this particular university reached out to me to tell me how that dollar goes to which kid, and, and, the, and they get the kid to volunteer information to me, how have you helped me? Because you know when I go to the university, my father had a stroke, right? I got three more brothers, I wanted to quit, but the university told me, take this, right? Uh, and it enabled me to finish my education. I think as a donor, when I hear that, when I see those letters, uh, I don't have to meet that student, right? But it resonates, it touches my heart that at least that dollar matter to help mm. a young kid fulfill his or her dream, finish the university education. Mm. So the, the, the communication with the no donors uh, is very, very, very important, mm. right? I, I do that in the SG giving. That, I, I can't get the personal touch from. I mean, yes, I use your, uh, your portal, but I don't get the personal touch, right? Uh, technology is one thing, but the personal touch from the beneficiary and the connection between the beneficiary and the donor is the one that sustains all this giving. 
And we have to be very clear, you cannot replace that with a machine. Okay. I think that's quite clear. The, I think very clear so far, the emotional bonding part of uh, fundraising should never, never be neglected. Mm. And the, the emotional bonding part is a function of how you message, how you communicate, and how you build community. Yes, Mark. Hi, this is Paul from SPD. I think it is important that uh, we educate our donor to give more. Mm. Uh, we educate them to how to connect with us. Mm. But I think I also have an appeal to our big brother, uh, Young, younger yeah. brother. <laughs> to say that, I think we also, time comes where you have to educate our donor to mm. say that it's okay to donate a little bit money where the charities will use that money at the back end. They will recruit a good fundraising staff. They will recruit yes. good mm. finance staff. Mm. They will spend money on good <laughs> audit firm. Mm. Because till today, our fundraising cost going up, up, up all the time, mm. and we don't see we're educating our donor, because all donors want to give service only to the clients, yeah. mm. this, that, and whenever we see our fundraising dollar crossing 20%, whole world is saying, this is not right. Mm. But how to, because in SPD, I can tell you, 10 years ago, our audit cost was only 5, 6K. Mm. Last year, we spent almost 130,000. Mm. Media again, eh? Mm. Uh, but that's the reality. Because each and every fundraising event, we have to go through the audit and its cost is going high. Mm. Yes. So how, what we are doing to educate our donor on that purpose? Mm. Uh, thank you for that very timely reminder about um, the cost of um, donations going up or, or complying with new regulations um, with regards to fundraising and your cost of uh, running a charity goes up. So this is a dilemma that we are facing, and I think uh, if we are looking for answers. Mm. Uh, I think first and foremost, my, my charity is my brothers and sisters. <laughs> when I say I love you, I mean it. Huh? Okay. Wrap up. That's why I'm trying all the way out to address your concern. But while you're pointing one finger at me, <laughs> notice three finger point back at yourself. Sometimes even four. Why I say that? The question I will really want to ask you all, touches the heart. Are all our charity market efficient? No, I mean it, no? For every dollar the donor gives to you, did you create $5 as a social impact? Or you only create $1? Worse, you create only 50 cents. Oh? So market discipline in terms of efficiency is something which I intend to help you. I've earlier shared with you one way of helping you to address my brother's issue regarding to auditing, account keeping, all the administrative capability is not to ask you to build this all in your charity. Why can't I pull it together in the shared services and <coughs> these shared services that service you? You just use it. And guess what? I'm getting people to what? to give to the shared services. So when it comes to you, it almost to what? Very, very, very cheap, good, and fast. So this is where I want you to focus on what you do best. Remember, market efficiency, effectiveness is equally applicable to you than to me. Now, the other things regarding to rules and regulations. I give you an undertaking. Everything I do, at the back of my mind, I always ask myself, I must not overburden the charity. If I overburden the charity, I lose the battle, I lose the war on the first start. Because why? When people heart get dampened, they will not do charity, they will not give, at the end, who suffer? So I be very mindful of not to dampen your charity. That's why I go on simplifications. The report that you'll be submitting to me is going to be what? Simplifies. Last time, I can, I can show you another thing. Last time, you all need to do all the things, or even the 3070 rules was mentioned just now. Let me quote the 3070 rules. Do you know that 3070 rules, I will relax it so that you no need to look at 3070 in each event, but you look at 3070 as a what? Yes. As a whole charity. 
Otherwise, every event, you need to get a cost accounting to do whether which was the direct cost, which is the indirect cost. It doesn't make sense. So my brothers and sisters, you have assurance for me that I don't want to overburden. Okay. Yet I believe, uh, I really believe, through simplification, we can have the cake and eat it. We can have accountability, and yet, and yet, we are overburdened, provided, number one, we must focus on the rock, not the pebble. Mm -hmm. The main thing. The main thing. Number two, the role of the responsibility. Now you can see I am now building it more and more to the donor. And I warn you, I really would like to warn you now, I will empower the donor more and more and more, which means to say you need to, it's not a matter of whether is overrule or under rule. It's a matter of the, the, the donor now become more sophisticated. They will want more from you. And we need to be prepared for that. And I will prepare with you. My promise to you is this. You will not walk the journey alone. I will walk with you. But you must want to walk the journey. Okay. So we thank uh, Brother Ang for that reassurance that we'll not be <coughs> overburdening uh, social services organizations with um, even with all the regulations that are coming on. I and, think uh, his first we... point, in case anyone missed it, was that uh, the use of shared services, you are encouraged to use your shared services because the resources are pooling of resources is always something that results in greater efficiency. Now, we're going to have to put um, an end to this very exciting uh, session on we have uh, time good for practices one more? in fundraising. Andy, just, sorry, just over here. Oh, Beneath sorry. the light, I know it's very hard to see, on the left, we Why have one you? more question over here. You're on the left. Ah, okay, sorry. Bright. You're hidden under bright lights, sir. I think you have to attend the visibility section at, at one o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, at our age. Can I pick up a question from the... Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Angie from Brahm Centre. Um, so, Dr. Ang, I really appreciate you talking about uh, how we create value. And so when I move over to the uh, uh, charity sector from the corporate sector, um, one of the things that I felt needed was to have employees all on contract rather than employment that's indefinite because the payroll cost is the highest cost for most charities. Mm. And uh, this salary can just keep creeping up. Uh, it, doesn't it doesn't mean that the value of contribution goes up. Mm. So, um, so we have uh, unconventionally put everyone, and including myself, uh, if I prove to continue to bring value, then I deserve my contract to be renewed. And if my value no longer, no longer commensurates with uh, what the organization needs, then they really should be replacing me, just like everyone else. Uh, my question is um, related to uh, sponsorships. Mm. So when we have, because like charity um, golf or charity gala dinners and so on, uh, it's quite straightforward because it's really the run-of-the-mill mm. um, fundraising events. But if there are other types of events that, we are appealing for sponsorship. Sometimes companies will say, can you send me an invoice? Mm. And if we send an invoice, that's going to mean that it's no longer considered a donation, which means that they will no longer be able to be eligible for tax deduction. Mm. I could be mistaken, which is why I would like to raise this mm. question. Sure. Are we able to raise an invoice mm. for a donation or a sponsorship and considered mm. eligible for tax yeah, deduction? Sure. Yeah. Uh, an invoice is a paper. You can call it invoice, you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> the point is, if I look at it from the donor perspective, when I donate certain amount of money to you, I want an acknowledgement. Because I also want to keep in my book to say that I donated one million to you. Right? I need, that, I need to have that accountability to my stakeholders. To answer your question is, it's not only, it's not about an invoice and your tax. Invoice seems to me that you, it's not a donation because the word invoice means that there is a service transaction yes. or there is what I call uh, offer and acceptance. Yes. And the moment there's an offer and acceptance is called conditional. And under the, the word conditional, IRAS will not give you the tax deduction. I hope you understand, huh? If you don't understand what I say, please check the IRAS website. 
you cannot issue tax receipt if the donation is conditional. It must be unconditional. <laughs> okay? Therefore, maybe it's a, it's a, it's a mis, uh, misinterpretation of the word invoice. Maybe what the donor wants is only a letter to say, acknowledge that I received the, the one million. Uh, that's okay, the tax, uh, the tax deduction. Yes. Well, the receipt has been issued. But sometimes it's their accounts department says, please send me invoice so that I can create the check. Yeah, so, so, so instead of call invoice. So we just have a letter of request. Yes, yeah, that, to, to acknowledge that you received the $1 million. But that's the second part. The first part is they want a request. So the normal finance term in commercial is invoice. Yeah, but you, yeah, as so I said, the word invoice. invoice. Uh, by the way, this regulation is not set by me. No, I understand. I'm not I, trying I to object to it. Just trying to clear. Cl cl yeah, sister, my, my advice is this. I think we should later on go outside and have a coffee <laughs> together. No, 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 my brother and sister, brother and sister, brother and sister, good money, please take. Uh, I don't want because of some bureaucratic rules and regulation, good money cannot take. However, it must be legitimate. Uh. <laughs> but I, I want to help bra Brother Ang here. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, this one uh, has nothing to do with Brother Ang. It's the bureaucracy of the accounts department of the company. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have seen this before. Uh, my advice is first, edu uh, you don't go and talk to the accounts department. The person who say, I want to give you a donation, must be someone higher up than the accounts department. Sure one, all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Accounts department only can pay when they see an invoice. So you talk to any accounts department or here, invoice, all right? But invoice can be a donation form, a signed donation form. We have helped charities design a signed donation form. You cannot anyhow issue invoice, all right? You give them a signed donation form, give it to the person that is definitely higher than the accounts department, the CEO, get the CEO and say, hey, your accounts department asked me to issue invoice, but if I issue invoice, uh, you couldn't get the tax deduction. Yeah. Mm. Can you fill up this, this uh, donation, donation form, form and educate your accounts department how to pay me? Okay. I think it solved the problem, all right? My so good he, brother. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this, this rule is not set by him. Uh. There's no such thing as a tax invoice. Yeah. Right? So yeah. one yeah. more question is related to uh, volunteering, which uh, you've all been encouraging us to even mm. con con convert donors to become volunteers. Mm. Uh, I have a concern here with now a lot of agencies wanting to collect volunteer information. Mm. Uh, soon we were going to have our population being concerned about volunteering in charities that receive grants because their names are all going to be given to a big brother. So I like to uh, just raise this uh, mm. before it becomes an issue, then volunteers don't want to come because mm. my IC, la, my address, mm. la, everything, how much I get mm. uh, in terms of mm. you know, uh, um, lunch money or so, big brother will know. Yeah, no, no, sister, no big brother lah. <laughs> <laughs> sister, 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 you and me, we, we, we do it for our heart. I mean, my, my, my take is this, you can take from me as commissioner of charities. The law is equally applicable to all, but in fact, I would put it the other way around to you. How many of you have been reading newspaper? What is on the front page of the newspaper? <laughs> Committee of Inquiry. Eh, Botha. <laughs> Didn't read. It's about what? Sing Health Data Bridge, right? Now, my, my biggest worry is this, uh, my brother and sister, especially from the charity. You know, we involve a lot of volunteers. Sometimes we ask the volunteer to give their particular from head to tail, right to don't know what. Uh, and then we kept it in the database. My bigger worry uh, is that if we do not protect the data properly, mind you, there's act known as PDS P D A. D. P D P A P D P A, yeah. and the act actually say it's an offence. So not only I worry for for about data being shared, I'm also very worried about you protecting the data when you ask data from charity from your volunteers. So for that, for that, I'll address your question in two parts. Number one. Sharing of volunteer information, the volunteer must agree, you know. Mm. You don't can can. <laughs> don't. If you do that, if the volunteer find out, the volunteer can actually complain to the commissioner, another commissioner, not me. Eh? <laughs> and he will come after you because it's an offense. 
So that's one. Huh? So you know that there's an act to protect the data of the, the, the person. But more importantly, charity, please be reminded. I don't want a charity to be hacked and your volunteer information or worse, and your beneficiary information are available for insurance for whatever purposes for people who buy the information. You, you, you got my point, my sister? Yeah. yeah. Yes. But if, if anything, I, I like your one million. Remember, I give the one million, the, the form, my brother said, the whatever form. If you want a template of the form, I can provide, I can provide, yeah. Donation. <laughs> Sias also can provide, right? The donation form. <laughs> no, no, but really, really. It's this style <coughs> yeah. of issue that I'm most happy to help you yeah. because it's, 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 it's due to misunderstanding of the rules and regulations. All right? I'm most happy to help you to resolve your mis... Your, that's why this is called you want but you don't know how. I'm most happy to help you. Please come to us on this. Okay, on that happy okay. note, uh, let's give uh, Brother Ang a big hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and of course, so, um, sorry, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, Brother Mark is glaring at me, so I guess this means our time is up. Uh, I ask you to give a big hand to the panelists. All right, all right thank you.